Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso. And today we're going to be looking at why is the Rolex Daytona so expensive. Now first off, I'd like to thank RX8 Golden Shield for lending in the watch that you're going to be seeing in the video today. But let's get right into it. Over the past one or two months, I've noticed the price of the Daytona has obviously continued to go up. And now it's gotten to the point where it's actually selling on the pre-owned market for more than a Vacheron Constantin overseas chronograph and just under, depending on the listing, the price of an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak chronograph. So this is putting it in some very, very heavy hitting company. This is High Horology Holy Trinity and the Daytona is up there competing with them on price. So to give you an idea, this is a watch that normally retails in steel at 12,400 US dollars and it's trading for anywhere between 21 to 34,000 US dollars. So that's a huge amount. Obviously it's a big range, but even if you just look on averages, it's right up there with the Vacheron and the Audemars. Today we're gonna to be looking at why it's so expensive on the pre-owned market. The first reason is of course, it's a Rolex. It's a good watch to begin with. With a retail starting at 12,400, it was expensive to begin with, but it does still represent good value as a watch in the sense that it is still a watch that has Rolex's over-engineered approach. It has the chronograph movement that has the least amount of moving parts in it, which not only means there's less to go wrong in terms of servicing and long-term usability, but it also helps it be very thin compared to other chronographs. Of course, it does include Rolex's Oyster Steel. It has the EasyLink. There's a lot of Rolex engineering and of course marketing that goes into pushing up the retail price. So on its own as a tangible product, it does carry a lot of value and that's the jump off point for the crazy astronomical pre-owned prices that we're seeing today. The second point and one of the biggest points that affects its price is it is a steel Rolex. Now, as I mentioned with my why is the Batman so expensive video, steel Rolexes sell for a lot more than their retail. And it's kind of a weird circular logic. The shorthand is, is that because steel Rolexes at retail were more accessible, there's more demand for them. More people could afford the lower end of the Rolex spectrum than the higher end gold and two-tone pieces and platinum ones. So that created a lot of demand. People could buy them. Then what happened though is that gray market dealers started buying them, holding them for a little bit to resell them. And what that did is it inflated the price, such to the point that a lot of steel Rolexes are selling for near, if not more than their two-tone variants, and in some cases, even near to their gold variants. And this, of course, affects the Daytona like it does pretty much every other steel sports model. And of course, the fact that the Daytona in general is released in relatively limited supply compared to things like Submariners and GMTs. So obviously the fewer ones that ADs get, the fewer ones that gray market gets their hands on, it means there's fewer watches in circulation that helps drive the price up. Next is the firsts that are featured on this. This is of course the first Daytona with a ceramic bezel, but it is of course an evolution of its predecessor, the Rolex 116520 Daytona, which featured a metal bezel. They're essentially the same apart from a few details on, on the dial, but they are largely the same watch, save for the bezel. So it is the first Daytona to feature a Saracrom bezel, so that does contribute as well. It is also the first and currently only Daytona available with a white metal and a black ceramic bezel on a bracelet. The white gold models, you can either get a full bracelet, but that'll have a metal bezel, or you can get an Oyster Flex, which is their rubber strap. That will be white gold with a black bezel, or you can get platinum, which is full bracelet, but that's a brown bezel. So it is a rarer thing within the Rolex line, and more than anything, it's less polarizing. Some people don't like the Oyster Flex, and some people don't really like the brown ceramic that's featured on the platinum one. And that's before you get into pricing, of course. So by being more appealing, that can also increase the demand for it. But it is largely an evolution. So it's the first with the ceramic bezel on a Daytona, but also it features that caliber 4135, which was Rolex's first automatic chronograph movement made in-house. Prior to that, they had the 4130, which was based on the Zenith uh, movement. So that what that means is that this now being a, a caliber that's been in the Daytona for nearly 20 years, it means that essentially the watch is in a constant state of sudden death. When are they gonna discontinue this movement and replace it? Because then this model will be the last one to carry that and that will drive the price up as well. So a lot of this price hype is about speculation based on the Rolex first. Being the first of something within Rolex or being the last of something 
tends to create a lot of demand around it. And that's obviously because people think of the resale value. And that resale value, especially for the Daytona, is derived from the next point, which is the Paul Newman effect. So in 2017, a year after this model was released, the Paul Newman Daytona was sold at auction for over $17 million, including buyer's fees, of course. And what this did is it meant that everyone who had a Daytona, who was selling a Daytona, realized, oh, now I can sell it for more because this could be the next Paul Newman. So again, that speculation aspect comes into it and people are thinking, all right, I want to get this watch because it's going to be the next classic that's going to sell for millions in 20 or 10 years or 50 years or however long it takes. So they want to have a little piece of that action thinking it's a long-term investment. And that again drives the price up. So those are the main reasons as to why the Daytona is so expensive. It has a good jump off point from being a high quality watch and a relatively expensive initial price. It's in high demand because it's a steel Rolex. It has a first in the Saracon bezel and a last in the 4135 movement potentially. And also it is very appealing because it is at the end of the day, a white metal with a black bezel on a steel bracelet. And there's the Paul Newman effect, all of which adds to the speculation that drives the price up. So a lot of this pricing is largely speculative. Not too much of it is tangible. Even thinking of if it's the last, Rolex could easily release another model of Daytona and keep the same movement. It's not uncommon for, for movements, especially chronographs, which are extremely long legged because they're so expensive to develop. It's not uncommon for them to last in excess of 30 years. The Baju 7750 is still used today and that's going on, I think, 40 years. So in my opinion, at least, I don't think that it's worth the same sort of money as something like an AP or a Vacheron. I don't think that the hype where it is right now is really worth it, but I would love to know in the comments below what you think. At what price point do you think that the Daytona is too expensive? At what price point do you think that maybe people are selling it short? And what do you think about the future? Do you think that this is a bubble that will burst or will the Daytona keep going up and up? My two cents is I think that it will keep going up purely because it's a Daytona. There's so much magic behind it. It will always keep going up, just maybe not at the rate that it's going right now. So let me know in the comments below and thank you again to RX8 Golden Shield for lending in the Daytona that we used for this video. If you like this video, please do like it and share it as well. And of course, if you want to keep seeing new watch videos, make sure you subscribe to Shaluso and hit the notification bell so you can get notifications of when I put up new videos. And last but not least, thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.